old and crumbling Saskatchewan landscape is a slow moving testament to the lives of a generation that now lie beneath the prairie grass. But in the village of Vanguard, they've made sure that the souls of the past will not be swept away with the prairie winds. Vanguard is a small community in southwest Saskatchewan. Its 152 residents are devoted to keeping this mainly agricultural community alive. And that means taking care of their unrecognized dead. This is an unmarked grave, one of dozens in this cemetery with no name, no date of birth, no date of death, nothing to tell a passerby anything about the life this person once lived. At least Annie has a name, but years ago, these graves had no markers at all. It's a common problem in graveyards across the province. Jim Lydine is a former school teacher. In his retirement, he's uncovered some of the mysteries of the Vanguard Cemetery. Well, here we have a grave, and I was able to find out that this was a teacher. Through his research, Jim has learned something about who these people were. Some of these were infants. Some of these were laborers. I think some of these people were transients. These people came in the very early days for whatever reasons and were employed on some farm or perhaps in some business here in Vanguard and died. And those people who were living here at the time took it upon themselves, I suppose, to inter these people, have a funeral for them, bury them. But maybe these people had no family that could be contacted, so there's where it ended. Jim thinks that suicide also played a role in some of these unmarked graves. Suicide was not widely accepted or understood in the 1920s and 30s when most of these graves were made. But economic hardship also contributed to the problem. Poverty is not generally a respecter of people. If there were shoes to buy for the children, food to put on the table, coal for the furnace, and buying a monument, I think these other things that I mentioned first would be a priority. Lori Finley was part of a team that wanted to right the wrongs on the Catholic side of the cemetery. We went out there as a, bill, as a church council and we could see that there was, body, there was bodies buried that that weren't marked, collapsed graves and everything, so we decided we had to do something with the graveyard. It was sad because there, there, was, there was a life there, you know, and we just felt as a, as a church we had to recognize, we had to recognize these people. We had to acknowledge that this, this is a human being and they, their burial spot had to be recognized. But recognizing those graves was made harder because one piece of key information was this missing original um, blueprints for the United Church uh, Cemetery. Marie Burton works at the village office where the cemetery maps are kept. The map for the United Church side of the cemetery is still intact, but the map for the Catholic side is nowhere to be found. Uh, you know, we had no record of where, of what happened or, you know, where they were buried, but it's probably all on that original map. Somewhere along the way it got lost that, you know, they don't know if somebody borrowed it and it didn't, never was returned. It's probably sitting in somebody's records or got thrown out when people didn't know what it was. Without the map, it would be impossible to know who was buried in which place. But the Catholic Church Council wanted to know at least where the graves were. We found out that when you probe into the earth, if you probe and the, the earth has never been disturbed, your, uh, a metal probe, like we just took metal rods, it will only go down like three feet, two to three feet, and then it stops. You cannot get the rod to go any farther. If the earth has been disturbed, you, t you can take rods and go down six feet, six, seven feet. Actually, sometimes you could probe right down and you knew you were hitting the top of, the, the top of a coffin or something like that. You could get it down that deep at times. Lori was shocked by all the resting places that had long been forgotten. And we started at one corner of the graveyard and went down the rows and just started probing every, every few feet to, uh, 
and we found lots of graves, not marked, but we could tell it was sunken or else sometimes it was level with the ground and you could see the probe went right down. We knew there was, it was a burial spot. And we got uh, crosses made for all these graves and went back and marked every one of them because we didn't want people walking over these graves anymore and we didn't want people driving in, driving in over top of them. The metal crosses still don't have names. This marker speaks for all of them. And even if family can go out there and say, I know they're here, you know, I know they're here somewhere, and I know they're one of these marked graves, I'm not sure which one, but at least I know they're here. And I thought, these were human beings, these people have to be recognized. Mm -hmm.